Welcome to another edition of the CINCOM Small Talk tutorial series. What we're going to look at this time is version control using either VisualWorks or Object Studio. It's the same in both products. And what we're going to take a look at is using SQLite as the backend database. Now for Store, which is the version control tool we're talking about, you need a backend relational database. That can be Oracle, it can be SQL Server, it can be DB2, it can be PostgreSQL. The reason we're picking SQLite here is because it's a simple file-based repository. You don't need the full database tool set in order to manage it. And for personal use, that makes it kind of perfect. If you're doing enterprise development or team-based development, you really want to use, now you can imagine air quotes here, a real database like Oracle or SQL Server or something along those lines. In any case, once you've got the support loaded, and I'll show you where to get that, you go into here to the parcel manager, go down to version control, and you want to select the store for the database you have, DB2, Interbase, Oracle, Postgres. We're picking SQLite. Now the interesting thing here is if you're on Linux or Mac, you already have these. If you're on Windows, all you need to do is go to sqlite.org slash download.html and you can get the binaries for Windows. Just download them, put them in the same directory with your image file, you know, the visual.im file, and everything will work just great for you. So once you've got that loaded, the next step you need to do is get your database set up. Now this next series of steps will be the same whether you're using Oracle or SQL Server or what have you. There's also some documentation you can go through if you want to hand this off to your DBAs, if they're the sort of people who say, no, no, you developers can't access the database, we have to do it. There's documentation for the scripts they need to run to set up these tables. So even though I'm doing it this way here, Bear in mind that if you have an enterprise sort of setup where only the DBAs can do this sort of thing, document it all completely in the documentation from Syncom. So store.db-registry install database tables. We're going to do it, do, it, do it here. And what this is going to do is prompt us. What interface am I using? What's the environment string? Now for SQLite, this will be the file name. So I'm just going to call it mydb. And then the username and password here doesn't matter much for SQLite. It's not checked. If you're using any of the other databases, it may well matter. You'll need to set that up with your DBA, so make sure that all functions. In any case, I'm just going to go ahead and connect, and what it's going to do is it's going to say, well, I don't seem to have that, so should I install the database tables? You say, of course, yes, and now a unique name. I'm going to call it the same thing as the file it's going to be saved in. And then install management policies, almost always say yes, and then just leave this to default. It's the administrator name, burn. Again, your DBAs might have a different idea here. We're just going to go with the defaults. And here is a question that you'll be asked. Is this going to be used with earlier versions of VisualWorks? Now, if you're in Object Studio, don't worry so much about this. If you're in VisualWorks, well, you do need to worry about it. If you have an older version, you need to actually connect this, say yes here at this point. Otherwise, say no. I'm going to say no because this is VisualWorks 710. If I were using Object Studio 8.5, I would answer the same way, so I'll say no. And now it's set up a repository that I can use. Now at this point to connect, I can come up here to the store menu and connect to repository. I could also just left click here and connect to, and at this point it's going to prompt me. Notice that it has all of the information I put in before. If I hit save, I could give this some logical name so that I don't need to remember. Now I have a pick menu where I can pick the one I want, and that's the only one I have, and I'll connect. And at this point, I have connected to my repository. So having connected to it down here, now I could go ahead and see if I want to save some stuff. So let's go down here, and let's just create a new package. So we'll create something called counter app, and we'll do the same sort of thing I often do. We'll create a new class here. We'll call this counter and we'll subclass it from object, we'll give it an instance variable, and at this point, we're not gonna write any actual code for this, we're just gonna go with this and say, well, this is my first edition. To publish this into my repository, I wanna select here, right click, and this is the same as if I went to the package menu up here. Notice the option in the middle, publish. We're not going to publish as a parcel, we're going to publish into the repository. If I weren't connected, it would have prompted me to connect to some repository I have, here I'm just going to go with the default, obviously the one I'm connected to. Version 1.0, I can come up with any string I care for as the version name. You should probably adopt a policy for main branch and subsidiary branches that make sense for your process. I'm just going to go with 1.0 here. The blessing comment, well, this is just whatever you want to put here. 
some meaningful comment as to what this is. So now if I hit publish, it's going to push that into the repository. It might be a little slower if you're talking about a database that's across your WAN. You know, if you're connected, say, to VPN, it might be a little slower. But in any case, at this point, I have that in there, and I can now browse publish items. There it is, counter app, and there it is there. I can browse this directly in my version control system, and this shows me a view of the code in the version control system without having had loaded it. So this is in the repository. Notice it says MyDB up here, as opposed to having a browser open on it, where it's going to be in the image. So this is the image. This is version 1.0. They could be different. I could have come over here and said, well, I'm going to start adding code. So let's say I want to add a new protocol over here. So I'll say API, and I'm going to add, add one, self count, self count plus one. So I add a little bit of code. And now I have a different version here than I have here, but I could publish that. So let's go ahead and publish that, and we'll just give it a meaningful comment again. Second, if I could spell, version. So we'll hit publish on that. And now we push that in there. And you might have noticed that it went with version 1.1. Again, you could change that any way you want, but typically better to go with the defaults or come up with a meaningful policy for your group. And again, close this down. If I now go and right click on this and say store browse versions, I can see all the versions in there. So there's 1.1. Notice the blue on that. That tells me that's the version that's loaded in my image. This is a previous version. I can, of course, load any previous version and get it into my image. So I can go ahead and load that. And now notice that the bolding changed on that. Now if I go back here, and click on and off this, you'll notice that that method vaporized. It's not there because I loaded the preceding version. It took care of all those changes for me. So this is the basics of the version control system. There's a whole lot more you can do with this as far as merging code and as far as comparing code. This is kind of a high level overview to get you started with it. I would highly encourage you to read the documentation and take a look at how things work. And this should be enough to get you started. So that's about it for today. Till next time, have fun with SimCom Small Talk.